Hello and welcome to Math 200 Online Statistics at Kenyatta College. My name is Ray Lapus. In this video, we will take a look at a homework problem from section 8.3. It says, in a study of 420,067 cell phone users, 119 subjects develop cancer of the brain or nervous system. They want us to test a claim of a somewhat common belief that such cancers are affected by cell phone use. That is, test the claim that cell phone users develop cancer of the brain or nervous system at a rate that is different from the rate of 0.0340% for the people who don't use cell phones. Because this issue has such great importance use a 0 0.001 significance level. So that significance level is a lot smaller than what we're used to. They want us to identify the null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, test statistic, p-value, conclusion, and the final conclusion that addresses the original claim. And they want us to use a p-value and a normal distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution. So we don't need to worry about that statement. Uh, we're going to be dealing with our um, binomial distributions here using the normal distribution as an approximation, always, in our, in our class at least. OK, so the claim is saying that the cell phone users develop cancer of the brain that is different from the given rate. So different from means not equal to. So there's greater than or less than or not equal to. And the greater than or less than and not equal to all have to land in the alternative hypothesis which is H1. And the only not equal to statements are B and D and the B lands on the H1 um, so your H naught will never be um, an inequality of some sorts, like not equal to, greater than, or less than. So it's never going to be that. Your H1 is always going to be equals. So this C would be a good H1, E would be a good H1, and B would be a good H1. But specifically for this problem, it's going to be B. Okay. Now that we have that, we know that we're dealing with a two-tail test. And I'm going to shift over to Google Sheets to gather the rest of the information. Um, we will make a note that the total number n is going to be 420,067. The x is the number of subjects that had cancer, so that's 119. And we have the given rate as this percentage, and so that is going to be associated with your P, or sometimes we call it P naught. And then a significance level of 0 0.001. I actually made a note of all those inputs already. X is equal to 119, N is equal to 420,067. P naught is equal to 0.0340%. Now we have to decide whether this is a left tail, a right tail, a tail, or a two tail. The sign used for H1 is a not equal to, so this is actually a two tail. And our alpha is 0 0.001. All right, so to find the test statistic Z, we're going to use this formula, which is P hat minus P. Actually, that's P naught. So P hat minus P naught divided by the square root of P naught Q naught over N. We're going to need some information here. Uh, we're going to need to know what P hat is, and we're going to need to know what Q is. We know that P is equal to 0 0.0340%. All right, let's get to it. P hat is really just x over n, 
so that's the proportion of the sample so I'll say equals and I'll click on X the X value which is 119 divided by the N value and I'm gonna get a really small number here 0 0.000283 and we'll just leave it at that so that's one of the things that we need the other thing we need is Q or that's Q naught and Q naught is really um, the complement of P P naught and so this is going to equal 1 minus and then this percentage over here so we can look at that as a percentage uh, remember that um, we sometimes would need to look at this as a number when we're dealing with um, our computations and our calculations uh, but we can also look at this as a percentage as well so I'll keep it a percent as a percentage for now and um, and the spreadsheet will know what to do when it does the calculations all right we have a two-tailed test and we're given alpha so our critical value is based on our alpha and to find our critical value it depends whether we're dealing with a left tail a right tail or a two tail so um, let's deal with this as a two-tail test and if it's a two-tail test you take your standard normal distribution that's norm dot s and you're going to take the inverse of that but you're going to cut your alpha in half because it's the alpha is spread within the two tails so this is going to be our function we'll say equals norm dot s dot inv and then the alpha value that we have I'll click on that or you can just type point zero zero one and then we'll divide that by two so we have a critical value of negative um, point three actually our critical value should be positive so we'll deal with that actually we can change it now just make this into a negative and then we have a positive critical value by the way we just want our critical values to be positive okay now to get our test statistic we actually didn't need this for our test statistic but uh, we have it now anyways to get our test statistic we're gonna put in this formula which is p hat minus p and it's in the numerator so I, I put that in parentheses p hat minus p in parentheses divided by the square root of and then you open parentheses and then you do that calculation that's p q over n okay so I'll say equals and I'll start my parentheses p hat p hat is this value over here that we found minus p which we're calling p not in this case and again it knows how to deal with this as a percent and then we'll divide and then sqrt for the square root open parentheses and then we have p naught again times q naught and then we'll divide by n and n is this big number over here that for um, 420,067 and we'll close the parentheses and we'll hit equals so our test statistic is negative 1.993 so I think that was one of the things that they're asking for round to two decimal places negative 1.993 um, to two decimal places this three is less than five so it's just negative 1.99 okay let's keep going would they want us to find the p-value to find the p-value um, we have a choice this is a two-tail test and so by the way this is a graph um, a graphic flowchart from your textbook in section 8.2 
and when we're dealing with a two-tail test we want to take a look at the test statistic if see if it's negative or positive if uh, if it's negative then we're gonna say the p-value is gonna be equal to twice of that area that we have and if it's positive is gonna be twice of the area on the other side now whether it's positive or negative depends on whether we're dealing with a cumulative or um, the opposite of a cumulative so in this case it's negative we got negative uh, 1.933 or negative 1.993 and so we're going to use this formula here so let's go ahead and type that in this is equals 2 times norm dot s dot d i s t for the distribution and then all we need to put in is the test statistic which is this number you can put in the negative or you can just type that in I clicked on the cell to access it and then our p-value is 0.046 and the p-value is usually, usually rounded off to four decimal places so let's capture the four decimal places 0.04618 0 0.04618 and so 8 is a number that's bigger than 5 so it means we'll round the 1 up to 2 and that should be it now they're asking the conclusion um, so this is where some of the information from section 8.2 would be handy um, if the p-value is less than the significance level let's say the p-value compared to the significance level if the p-value is less than the significance level we reject the null hypothesis so there's a choice of rejecting the null hypothesis and we will not choose this one because our p-value 0.0462 is bigger than 0 0.001 so it's one of these two fail to reject so we were going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now the null hypothesis we fail to reject because the p-value is greater than significance level and the p-value is 0 0.04, significance level is 0 0.001 so I think it's going to be this A choice. Alright finally we want to say this in words whenever we fail to reject something then there's not going to be efficient sufficient evidence to support or reject the claim so there's not sufficient evidence there's not sufficient evidence so we'll eliminate the, the, the bottom two where it says there is sufficient evidence and we'll stick with A or B now our original claim had to do with a not equal to symbol and so uh, the not equal to symbol when your claim is the alternative hypothesis then you're looking at either trying to support it or not support it so I think it's going to be this one when we are there's not sufficient evidence to support the claim alright so how does that work out uh, it turns out that we're trying to reject the, the null hypothesis and we were not able to reject the null hypothesis and remember the null hypothesis is that the p-value or no, I'm sorry that the proportion is equal to this so they're wondering if there's a difference between cell phone users and non cell phone users and it turns out that um, we tried to say that there is a difference and we wanted to reject we tried to say that um, that the the proportions are the same we tried to say that that's our P that's our uh, um, null hypothesis and we were not able to reject that null hypothesis and so because we're not able to reject that null hypothesis there's a possibility that it's true we're not sure if it is but there's a possibility that it's true so we cannot support 
the alternative hypothesis, which is a claim. So our statement here is that there's not evidence to support the claim that there's going to be a difference between the cell phone users and the non-cell phone users. All right, let's go ahead and check that answer, and it looks good. I hope that helps.